What's up everyone? In this video, we're going to upgrade our payload CMS instance from 3.18 to 3.27. I'll highlight important new features and bug fixes and troubleshoot as we go. Before we get started though, make sure you're subscribed to my channel and getting notifications so you never miss when I release a video about Payload CMS, Next.js, and more. Now let's dive in. The Payload team is continually busy at work releasing new features and bug fixes, sometimes multiple times a week. With each new version, new features are released steadily, and it can be hard to keep up with all of them. And that's the point of these upgrade guides. I hope to point out the most valuable features and bug fixes for you to start using in your projects. If you have a version of Payload CMS that's less than 3.18, you can check out my other upgrade guides, which can help you get up to this version. Once you're caught up, feel free to follow along. Of course, you can always jump up to the latest version, but don't miss those key updates. Version 3.19 comes with a couple of new features. So we're gonna select all of our 3.18 payload packages and update them to 3.19.0. And I hit replace all, and we can do p -N -P -M i to install all of these packages. One of the new features of this version makes decorator nodes and blocks selectable in lexical rich text. So let's check that out. First, we need to run pnpm dev, and now we can go to our admin. So now that our admin UI is pulled up, we can go to our blog posts, and we'll just go to our first blog post here and add a couple of blocks. We'll just add one of each, where we have our table of contents, and we also have our content with media block. And so now if we click into them, we can see that we're actually able to select these. We can also cut and paste the blocks to move them around. Of course, we still are able to collapse and delete blocks as usual. Before this version, you could only collapse and open the block by clicking on it, but now when you update to 3.19, you can select the block like I just showed. You're also given the ability to edit mini when you bulk upload your media. There are also quite a few bug fixes as well as updates to the documentation in this version. Now we'll go to version 3.20, so we'll update all of these packages from 3.19 to 3.20, end our session here and run pnpm i. For those using locales, publish and publish specific locale buttons are now allowed to be swapped in version 3.20. There are also a few changes to the diff component. In 3.20, you can now collapse fields in the version diff view, customize the diff components, and toggle a view that only shows modified fields in the diff view. Before this version, you weren't able to do any of that, but now if we update to 3.20, we'll see that we can go to our diff view by first restarting our server, and then reloading our page, and then clicking on our versions tab here, and then we can click into any of our versions where I'll click into the second to last one. And we can see here, we're able to collapse each of the individual fields. And then we can also see this checkbox where we can filter by modified only. And of course, if we then go to our blog collection, we can go to any of our fields and add a new admin components. And then we can see diff is now available to be used as a custom component. But for now, we will delete this because we won't be using it. Version 3.21 is light on new features with just a few helpful args exposed from schema generation, auto resize feature being added to text area fields and an update to the multi-tenant plugin. Several bug fixes were launched for the search plugin as well, with the key one being that the full doc URL is now generated with the base path from nextconfig. This makes it easier to return the proper URL for your search plugin. And just to make sure that there's no errors here, we will select all of our packages at 3.20 and replace all for 3.21. End our server there, run pnpm i, and once that's done, we'll run pnpm dev. Then let's click and go back to our homepage. And we can see here that there are no errors. Now version 3.22 improves the has many text field UX and fixes several bugs within the Postgres adapter, multi-tenant plugin, and lexical rich text adapter. There are a few UI updates done as well, but a majority of the work seems to have been done in the chores section of the release notes. But let's go ahead and update from 3.21 to 3.22, replace all, run pmpmi, and then once that's done, we'll run pnpm dev. And we'll come over to our post config where we have a text field. Go to our text field and add has many as true. 
And so now we go to our blog posts, and then we can go to blog one test. And we can see here that the slug text field has been updated to accept many fields. And if you had a previous version of payload, this UX would look different. Now let's move on to payload version 3.23. So we will select all of our 3.22 and update to 3.23, run PNPM I, and then finally PNPM dev. Time zone support for date fields and scheduled published drafts was added in version 3.23. You're now able to add a new admin.timezones config to your date fields that takes a default time zone string as well as a supported time zones array. So let's check it out. So now we can go to our post and add a new field that will name date, which will have a type of date, which can then take time zone as true. We also have the ability to set a time zone in our admin by finding our admin prop here and then add time zones with an object of default time zone, which we can do as America, New York. And in supported time zones, we'll pass in an object that takes a label, which we will set to be GMT6 Monterey Nuevo Leon with a value of America. Monterey. Now we can save this and when we load up our admin UI we can see a new date field with a drop down for our time zone here. And so I don't see the America New York default time zone so that means we need to add a new label where we'll do GMT minus 5 for we'll just do East Coast time, but then we can do America, New York for the value. And then once our admin UI reloads, we can see that our default is set to East Coast time and we can select a date just like we would normally. Now, if we wanted to schedule this post, we can do that by hitting schedule publish and we can see the time zone is there as well in our publish workflow. Now version 3.24 was a massive update. Many UI changes were implemented and several features were added in this version. First, we'll talk about the UI changes and we'll update all of our packages here from 3.23 to 3.24, run PNPM I, and then finally PNPM Dev. Version 3.24 introduced a new link component from the Payload CMS team that adds a progress bar on page transition. This gives the user a feeling of interaction with the site, which can make the perception of speed on the site more apparent. Some work was done around making this a smooth animation that was pleasing to the eye. We can see that by going back to our homepage. And now if I click anywhere, we can see a nice progress bar at the top showing that an interaction has taken place. Other UI updates include hiding the add button if an array field has admin read only set to true. Prior to updating to 3.24, the add button remained. So if we go to our blog posts and then in our config, we can add a new array, which we'll set as name array, type array, and then we can set admin read only to true. After we set admin read only to true, we of course need to add our fields array, which we'll just add name array text with type of text. So now we can see that we're not able to add anything to this array unless we change read only to false, which will then add the add array button back. Now if I add an array item and publish the change and set read only to true. The item remains, I'm no longer able to edit it and the add item goes away. Now for the other updates. You can now use interface name on radio and select fields so you can generate types for those field types. As far as custom components go, you're now able to edit the list menu items. This allows you to add custom components after the existing list controls like columns and filters in your list view. Large file uploads are now enabled using version 3.25. So if we go over to our package.json, we can then change our 3.24 to 3.25 and replace all, run pnpm i, and then pnpm dev. 
Before version 3.25, large file uploads would fail when trying to upload with Vercel as your platform. There is also added support for a not-like operation, which can help you more finely control your where queries without having to fiddle around trying to make a negative version of the like operator. One update I'm particularly excited about is the ability to add an admin.group property to your block config. So let me show you that. If we go to our project and we find our blocks, we can go to our content with media config and we'll open our table of contents config as well. And in our block config, I can add an admin. I can add a group where this can be content. And then with content with media, I can do the same thing and add admin and then add a different group here, do group images. So now if I save that and refresh our admin UI, we can then add a block and see that these are grouped with images and content. And so whether or not those groups make sense is irrelevant, but now you can see just like your collections and your globals, you can organize your blocks using headers, and in different sections. And just like your collections and globals, each block with that string value will be added to a group of that name. Also in 3.25, we are able to update our next JS package to 15.2. And in my case, at the time of this recording, we can go up to 0.1 as well. So if I run pnpmi, I'm now on next JS 15.2.1. Version 3.26 adds the ability to cancel jobs, adds the update mini method to the database adapters, and adds support for a limit to that method, and adds a new helper that makes it easy to change HTML to lexical data. When on small screens, the nav now closes when the user navigates away as well. So on my screen here, I still have my 3.25 version up, and if I click on the menu and navigate to users, we can see that the nav stays up. So if I go back to blog posts, I can see that the route has changed, but the nav has not gone away unless I hit the X. But if we update to version 3.26 instead of 3.25, we can run pnpmi, and then finally pnpm dev. We can refresh our admin UI, and now if we go to the nav and navigate to users, we can see that the user's route loads up and the admin nav goes away, just like you would expect it to. And that brings us up to version 3.27, the latest version at the time of this recording. So I'm going to take all of our 3.26 and upgrade this to 3.27, run pnpmi, and lastly pnpm dev. This version introduces the payload admin bar, which shows a few admin specific tools to your website when enabled. Also in 3.27, you're able to hide the block name field in your blocks headers by setting admin disable block name to true. So we can do that by going to blog one test. And once we're in there, we can see these two untitled flags here in our blocks. But if I go to content with media, I can go to our admin section and add disable block name and set that to true. And we can see that in our content with media block, it has disappeared from both. But if I add a table of contents block, I can see that the untitled block name is still there until I go in and add our disable block name here and set that to true. And we can add the table of contents block back and see that the title or the block name has gone away. With that, we're now at the most updated version of Payload CMS. I've only highlighted what I view as the most important features and bug fixes, but this is only a small portion of what the Payload CMS team has launched in the last couple of weeks. Be sure to check out the release notes on your own to make sure you don't miss anything you might need or find valuable. If you found this video helpful, please like it and share it with others who might also find it useful. Check to make sure you're subscribed to my channel and receiving notifications so you never miss when I release more content around Payload CMS, Next.js, and more. If you have suggestions or questions, please leave those in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. Until then, I'll see you on the next one.